Give me your age, your location, and your relationship status, and then we'll keep going. I am 52 years old. Mm. I'm married. Looking like she's 12. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I am from suburban Detroit. So now, going Come back on. to... Come on. <laughs> my status, married but separated. Mm -hmm. Last time I talked to you, Dr. Spirit, um... I think at that time, it was towards, I guess it was in October last year, sometime in there. And my focus at the time was on the fact that me and my husband, we've been separated, but we and were- 12 months later, we still separated, D-Dub. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. And uh, my focus then was that we were not engaging in any kind of sexual intimacy nothing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we had separated with the uh, agreement that we would you know work on ourselves and also still continue to like date each other and basically try to build a friendship something mm -hmm. that we did not do when we got married we got married like i met him in march the and whole we year. Built a friendship something that so just like, you March, know, wait, few, March of what year? Um, 2017. Okay. Okay. So we've been married for seven years. And um, you guys have been so separated how long now? It is going on three years. So y'all hear that seven, yeah. three years separated. Mm. Okay. I you just, called it. I did. Cause it's yep. science. You like science. I want you to get this so you right. can get your life together. Right. Okay? So yeah, that's yeah. why I pointed out. Okay. okay. So where are you guys at now with no traction? Have we honored the agreements of the, the intention of the separation or where? Oh, she's like, mm -mm. okay. So where are well, we at then? What's the question? And my, and my question to you, I'm going to just get right to it at this point, because I pretty much like, I was talking to you before about us not having any intimacy and I'm at the, I'm have now went past that point. Like it doesn't even phase me anymore. So what does that and, mean? I no longer need the sex. Um, I think I, 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 I guess it, well, no, I won't say I guess I've been doing a lot of praying and just, mm -hmm um getting my relationship with god more closer and tighter but and hold up now d-dub the marriage bed is undefiled and that is biblical that is <laughs> yeah, in the right, scripture right, right. <laughs> so when you say this have we just decided that the sex is no longer going to be important or are there so many other issues that we can't even think about the sex because we don't even yeah. have friendship as a foundation so much less i ain't even thinking about having sex yeah, with you there's so many issues that I truly have not even had the desire anymore mm. and he hasn't engaged me and I've been like, okay, I'm all right with that. So then why are we sitting in a place where we're parked in a relationship committed to somebody who's not going to meet our needs and how have we become all right with that instead of deciding what, what, there was another podcast where somebody said, don't let a bad husband keep you from a good one. Mm. So what are we doing then that we finally have decided I'm all right, just sitting with my needs, not being met. I'm not being sexually satisfied. I'm not being emotionally satisfied. I'm not being intellectually satisfied. And now I'm in year three and I'm just good with it. What is happening in your world that you would be good with not getting your needs met when you signed up to be with somebody for a lifetime to meet your needs? I have no idea. Mm. And I'm totally honest, like mm -hmm. I feel so stuck. Well, I don't know if it's that you're stuck or if you've gone numb. That could be, yeah. That's, a, that's probably a good description because I feel like at this point, he's now telling me that he's so focused on um, bettering himself. He says he wants to be uh, better for me and his children and, you know, um, but so, I'm so, like, but that's him. So now let me ask you, because you said when y'all got separated, you made an agreement. You don't know where you are and how you're feeling and why you're stuck. Have you been in therapy for this last year trying to fit? Because see, this, this don't question. make A plus B. This dog ain't hunting. So what yeah. have you been doing in order to take care of yourself in order to move yourself into a space of thriving while he's doing yeah. whatever he doing? Tell me what you've been doing to take care of you. 
I've been in individual therapy and mm -hmm. um, I've just been like, yeah, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to focus on me. Like I have, I have totally gotten to a point where he's not even a thought. Like we go days without talking to each other. And okay, like, so, yeah. what, so D Dub, let me ask you this real quick. Do you want love in an intimate partner Absolutely. relationship? Do you want Absolutely. sex in an intimate partner relationship? Absolutely. You want intimacy and meaningful connection? Absolutely. Okay, then you and your therapist aren't doing good work because when you tell me you are focused on you and you just told me there's four basic needs that you're not getting met, mm. then how can you be focused on you if you're not getting your needs met? This ain't you focused on you. This, this, this is not you being satisfied. This is not you being taken care of. So at some point, we have to figure out if your goal is to get your needs met and you are sitting right here in a situation that's not meeting your needs, what steps are you going to have to take? And you getting your needs met has to be the non-negotiable. He is the negotiable here but you always got to be okay with you. So if you have committed to a man who won't even do the bare minimum to meet your needs, then what does that say about what some of your options may need to be? So forget mm -hmm. what he's saying, what is he doing? And is what he's doing moving towards the goal of your needs being met? And if not, you don't need anybody's permission, their agreement or their understanding for you to get your needs met. Because if you're in alignment with the father, then you already know he intended every good thing for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna leave that right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I am delivered. D, you know, yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I, but see, D Dub, thank you for being honest because mm -hmm. I think what a lot of us do mm -hmm. is we find these situations that we're in we do not like, and we figure out a way to just find some level of comfortability or normality. Listen, probably better listen, in this toxic situation. Even if that we it's don't just like. even if it's just disconnect. I can't change the other person. They won't give me the experience that I want. And I don't want to have to make the hard decision to switch this up. So I'm just going to sit and whatever I got to do in order to be able to survive, I'm just going to do that. Mm. So I'll go numb. I'll just sit. I'll wait. I'll fight. I'll pray. I'll beg. I'll plead. I'll distract myself. I'll avoid. I'll start the cycle all over again. But anything besides me having to make the hard decision to take care of me. Mm. And that's and what that's we got to so stop true doing. Because why did I go all the way to filing divorce papers? I mean, went to the court, everything. And because you didn't do it to actually file divorce. You did it to get his attention, hoping that that was going to be the thing that finally changed his behavior. So Dang. he would finally give you what you want. You never intended on getting a divorce. And so you got to be careful because you don't want to play with it either. Because then you yeah. teach him that you're not serious and that he's got you. Mm. right and that's the cycle that you don't want to get into because then it's like a chess game and then you run out of every move and then it's checkmate either you got to proceed with the divorce or you got to stop playing with it and then require him to stay in it and if he stays in it with you then you got to recognize this is who he is so then you also got to stop complaining because this is what you're choosing Oof, so what do you do in a situation where what's your suggestion for if you know you have a man that's telling you that you know i'm taking the time to better myself because at the end his end goal is to be better for you and the family like but I, I'd, I'd want to know so so you can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time and if you trying you to get better like, right because if like, you like mm -mm. Uh, uh, mm -mm. not an option that i'm supposed to just allow you to just be and, but, and but see d-dub look I'm, I'm not even gonna make this about him i'm gonna make it about you because i'm not telling you nothing that you don't already know you just don't want to do it so can we just get real and let's just talk about the part of you that want to keep this man the part of you that wants to hold on to this family, the fantasy that you are holding out for that has you wasting the last three years of your life 
And if you keep going, another three, another three, another three, your kids are going to age out. Your kids are watching you guys have relationships. You're creating intergenerational trauma. They're going to go into anxious attachment styles, not trusting relationships, not trusting what people do, not trusting what people say, being with people that say one thing and then do something else. You guys are creating this whole toxic cycle of just everybody being stuck in toxicity. For what? If he can't manage a wife and a family and he needs to better himself That's and he needs like. time away from you. No, that ain't what it sound like. What it sound like? It sound like that man ain't ready to do what needs to happen in order to take care of a marriage and sustain a family. I, a I agree with that. Do, do you know, mm -hmm. by the way, does he does he have a mistress or is he dealing with any other women? He says he's not. And you haven't checked or you haven't done any research? I wouldn't even know that because like I said, you know, it's it's now at a point where we haven't seen each other in about three weeks. Oh, wow. Oh, my See, God. See, listen, and to me, at the end of the day, I don't care if he's out there sleeping with 10 women because the only thing that matters is one thing, D-Dub, and that's you mm. and whether what? or not you are having the experience that you want to have, and that is either a yes or no, and nobody else is responsible for creating that experience for you except for you. And while you're sitting over here begging, pleading, waiting, praying, hanging on, trying to do this, for somebody else, meeting those needs would be the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. there's a man out there that would be like that's all you want Shh, aim higher yeah. baby let me show you and that's the fact, it the fact that he just shared with me too that you know in his therapy that he came to a realization that he wasn't loving himself listen so D I would, this man having fake you, breakthroughs. Listen, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. He is, he is probably peeling back some layers. But what I'm going to tell you is if that's where he is and that's what he's realizing, then the process that it's going to take him in order to even figure out who he is before he can even fall in love with himself to then have to turn around and figure out if this new healed loving myself version of him is even compatible with the marriage and with you. You're yeah. going to wake up. Your husband is not going to be your husband. And there's no guarantee that he's going to be the husband that you need, want, and or desire. So while yeah. he is doing his thing, I want you to be very real. And don't be mad at him about the time that you are choosing to waste because this is 100% your choosing. D-Dub, listen, I got to let you listen. 100%, sis. I hope you, listen, that's enough right there for you to take some action and make some progress. <laughs> Yes. Keep yes. Me, keep us updated. Info at harleyinitiated.com. Let us know what's going on so we can stay tapped in with your stories, sweetheart, okay? Yeah. And the hardest thing about this is it feels hard. But I'm just going to say this, D-Dub, 18 months from now, your life could look totally different. And if and when you finally start getting those needs met, you're going to be like, the only regret I have is that I didn't do it sooner. What the hell was I doing sitting waiting in order to get my needs met? Because you will never get this time back, and neither will your children. D-Dub, you be blessed, okay? Mm -hmm. Shout I out love to you, you sis. I'm praying for every good thing Ooh. for you. Man. Yes. Mm -hmm. I too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. D-Dub, we got to hear from you again, too. You got to make sure the next time Dr. Spirit come on, you got some good news for us. Don't tell me you still separated right. sitting at the house, and now you ain't heard from him in three months. I always want to talk to Dr. Spirit. That's Girl, for real. listen, you you still sitting over there separated. I'm going to get on the plane and come to Detroit. Y'all got some uh, some fight sponsors? <laughs> for you, listen, for you, we take care of it. Come you on. You good with us, Dr. Spirit. Yeah. Come on, D-Dub. You so got check this, it out. Sis.